join Forum IS Academy, trusted by hundreds of toppers, including IS Rank 1 Shruti Sharma. Hello and welcome to Forum IAS. These are all the articles that we are going to discuss today. Now we will start with the first article. The first article says that Modi CC Inc. deal on strategic partnership. So this comes on the sidelines of our Prime Minister Modi ji visiting the country of Egypt. And here is a picture of him in the Great Pyramid of Giza with the Egyptian Prime Minister. So, uh, this Sunday, the Prime Minister signed a strategic partnership agreement with the country of Egypt. So, there were bilateral talks with President Abdel Fattah El Sisi in Cairo. Uh, if you remember clearly, during our Republic Day, Abdel Fattah El Sisi was the chief guest. And now our Prime Minister has gone on a state visit to the country of Egypt and he has signed a strategic partnership agreement with Egypt. And Prime Minister has also been bestowed with the highest honour of the land. Like India has the highest honour which is the Bharat Ratna. Similarly, the highest honour in the land of Egypt is the Order of Nile. This award was also bestowed upon the Prime Minister. Further, there were also MOUs in the fields of agriculture, archaeology, antiquities, competition law, etc. So, these are all not that important. Only thing that we should keep in mind is the strategic partnership that we signed with Egypt. So, as I already talked about the Order of the Nile Award, there were other past recipients that is late Sultan Qaboos, uh, the ruler of Oman, he was the ruler of Oman, Nelson Mandela, Suharto, who is the former president of Indonesia. These are all the eminent personalities who have already received the Order of Nile, which has now been presented to PM Modi. And also, the Prime Minister visited Heliopolis Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. And in this War Grave Cemetery, almost 4,000 Indian soldiers are remembered through this cemetery. And Prime Minister paid homage to 4,300 Indian soldiers who perished in Egypt and Aden during the World War I. Egypt was one of the theatres in the World War I and in remembrance of that, he visited the Heliopolis Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. Apart from that, he met the members of Indian community and visited the Al Hakim Mosque. This is about the article. So, what we need to remember? The first thing is the strategic partnership. We need to remember the order of nine. Then we need to remember the MOUs in which fields they were signed, just have it as an understanding. This won't be asked specifically. Okay, so that's it for this article. But questions will come from geography map pointing. So we have brought out the map of Egypt. We have the Nile River passing through Egypt. So here we have the Suez Canal. This is the Sinai Peninsula. This was a point of uh, conflict with, in, during the Arab-Israel war. So, this is the Gulf of Suez which separates the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. There is also the Gulf of Aqaba, Gulf of Aqaba that is in the tip of Israel. And apart from that, we have the Aswan Dam which is the very famous dam in Egypt. And then there is Lake Nasser, which is in Egypt. Okay. And Tropic of Cancer passes through Egypt. So, these are all the important points to note. Let's move on to the second article. 
This article specifically talks about the Tamil diaspora. Why? Because Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M K Stalin, when he visited Japan, he addressed the Tamil diaspora. So this article is about that. So the Tamil diaspora, they form a overwhelming majority of Indian population in Malaysia, Singapore, Sri Lanka. They are in good numbers in Myanmar, Mauritius, South Africa, Seychelles, Reunion Islands, Fiji, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, Suriname, Australia, New Zealand, Gulf countries, US, Canada, Britain and European countries. So these are all the countries where Tamil diaspora is found in huge numbers. So typically, what are the problems of diaspora? We have to know that. And in honor of diaspora, what is the Indian government doing? Indian government celebrates the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. So earlier it was celebrated on January 15th that is the day on which Mahatma Gandhi returned to India from South Africa. Now this Pravasi Bharatiya Divas, this celebration happens twice in a year. Okay, but the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas, the day is celebrated on January 15th. Okay, so typically the problems of diaspora, it depends on the nature of their migration, whether it is an illegal immigration, whether it is a legal immigration. It is not only with respect to Tamil diaspora, any diaspora, the problems depend on the nature of their migration. Have they migrated out of compulsion? That means they are more vulnerable. Their numerical numbers that shows their social capital so how much they can depend on each other their educational and professional attainments that depends and it will determine the kind of job that they are doing whether they are in manual labor semi-skilled job or skilled job how much they are being paid their economic status also determines how much say they have in their host country right their economic clout, majority minority syndrome in the host countries, what is the attitude towards migrants in the host country, all these factors determine the problems of diaspora. Depending on that only the diaspora problems will exist and it varies across different host countries. Okay, so in this article it talks about the Tamil diaspora and the diaspora has contributed to many famous personalities like Dr. Chandrasekhar who was a Nobel laureate, Monty Naikar, Sambandhan who is a minister in Sri Lanka, Janaki Thevar, she was in the INA which was constituted by Subhash Chandra Bose, T.S. Maniam, Saumya Murthy Tondaman, S.R. Nathan, Muttaya Muralitharan, the famous cricketer, Naga Mattu, Indra Nui, who is the CEO of PepsiCo, Sundar Pichai, Google CEO, Raghuram Rajan, Kamala Harris, they are all diaspora members and they are especially Tamil diaspora members. So, when India was about to attain independence, our then Prime Minister, Sri Jawaharlal Nehru, he gave certain statements. He said, when India becomes free, her hands will be long and powerful to protect each and every one of her children abroad. So, he also said Indians abroad must remain united and guard their rights and uphold their heads proudly as Indians, the children of a country with a great past and great future. So, is India able to protect the diaspora? Does she really have long and powerful hands? To an extent, yes, because uh, in the recent past, we had so many missions to evacuate Indians from war prone areas. Even other countries sought India's help, like we had uh, Mission Ganga to evacuate Indians from Ukraine. We had Mission Kaveri 
to evacuate indians from sudan so all these missions show that india's hands have become long and powerful not only with respect to citizens but also with respect to diaspora so in this context what should be done what should be the diaspora policy of the indian government see uh, often times what happens is in the foreign relations it is not a zero sum game so india wants to put forward the best interests of its nation and in that process many a times what happens is the diasporic interests are kept in the back burner say for example in the sri lanka situation to improve the political relations some occasions they were willing to sacrifice the interests of indian diaspora say uh, here we have some historical scenarios so in sri lanka we know that there is a huge tamil population and out of that sri lankan tamils we have indian tamils also so these indian tamils they were taken from india to sri lanka during the british period to work as plantation laborers once india and sri lanka attained their independence what happened was sri lanka didn't give them the status of citizenship at that time our prime minister nehru he said that all those who considered ceylon that is sri lanka to be their home and have stayed there for long should be conferred citizenship he advocated for citizenship for these Indi- indian tamils who went during the british period but then ceylon argued that it was its sovereign right to introduce citizenship regulations practically even today these indian tamils are stateless they don't have a state neither did they get indian citizenship nor did they get sri lankan citizenship for mistake that is not their own it's not even a mistake they were taken as plantation laborers from india to sri lanka by the british so they are remaining practically stateless one more thing happened in the india burma relations burmese government they never granted citizenship to thousands of indian tamils and they expelled them and even the women could not even bring about bring out their mangal sutra from burma when they were um, evacuated from burma they were not even allowed to take their belongings such is the manner in which diaspora were treated in the past however today the situation has changed but the scars le- left behind by these scenarios still remain so that is why the author of this article he is arguing that uh, the citizenship amendment act must be reconstituted in the sense that it mentions only christians hindus that is every non muslim from only three countries that is afghanistan pakistan and bangladesh right so these three countries only are mentioned in the caa and it specifically mentions about hindus christians sikhs parsis etc except muslims but the author is saying the much ignored part of persecuted minorities are the indian tamils so probably it must be citizenship amendment act it could have used the term persecuted minorities right instead of specifically mentioning the religions so the deserving people could get indian citizenship right so that way we can change the citizenship laws to accommodate these people and state governments can also play a role in shaping policies towards diaspora because though the central government has the exclusive jurisdiction many states like kerala tamil nadu they are engaging with their diaspora in this way states can also play a role in shaping the policy towards diaspora 
and also improving relations with the governments that is the host countries political relation economic relation cultural relation so that the host country treats the diaspora indian diaspora in a very good way so that is the way forward so this article is mostly about uh, in tamil diaspora but we can extrapolate it for our main purposes to cover all kinds of diaspora the problems of every diaspora is the same and these quotes can be used in any kind of diaspora and this way forward it can be used for any kind of diaspora that is why i have picked these things out and given it in the notes okay next article next article talks about the mq9b drones that india is willing to purchase from the us now we will see about this article india is planning to procure mq9b high altitude long endurance unmanned unmanned aerial vehicles uav they are also called as drones okay so what is the cost and process to be followed in case of procuring the mq9b uavs so it is proposed to be assembled in india and once we get this it will enhance the intelligence surveillance surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities of indian armed forces across domains general atomics which is the company that is supplying these drones they will establish a comprehensive global maintenance repair and overhaul facility in india because india make in india for defense is also an aim for india so if the maintenance and overhaul facility is in india it will support india's long term goals to boost indigenous defense capabilities and also india is negotiating to increase the indigenous content under the deal at present the indigenous content is 8 to 9% only but india is willing to increase india wants the company that is the general atomics to increase the indigenous content to 15 to 20% that means 15 to 20% of components in this uav will be procured from india so this will give some kind of fillip to our local defense industry this indigenous content requirement assembling in india then repair and overhaul facility in india that is also giving boost to our domestic defense industry uh, so if we are purchasing this uav what does it bring in terms of capability so it can fly up to 40 yards that is without right it is remotely operated it is without a pilot depending on the configuration in all types of weather so this mq9b uav has a flying time of 40 hours it can fly continuously for 40 hours and they can provide 80% of capability of a human flown maritime patrol aircraft at about 20% of its cost so it is cost effective also we need not deploy see if it is human flown we have to deploy pilots and pilots are human beings they require breaks they require sufficient time to recuperate so if we are using these uavs in that place it will be lesser load on our pilots also that is also mentioned in this article and also this is more economical how because 80% capacity is fulfilled in 20% of cost say for example this uh, drone it has two versions one is the sea version navy version one is the air force version the navy version is called as sea guardian so these sea guardians these uavs can be sent out into the sea and they will do the re, uh, rescue mission that is the reconnaissance mission and if there is any necessity human crewed aircraft can be vectored in so this will save the time cost wear and tear on the equipment wear and tear on the human resources also 
so for army and air force also there is a variant one variant is for navy another variant is for army and air force so in army and air force also they can provide round the clock surveillance say for example chinese build up and troop movement along the line of actual control the lac that can be monitored easily with the help of drones without provoking if it is a manned aircraft it is much more serious without provoking we can easily conduct resi missions in that case and also these drones they integrate very well with us origin platforms that we are already using like for example p8is are the aircraft that we use apache he attack helicopters so this particular uav it integrates with other us related platforms that are deployed in our armed forces already navy has two mq9 as so we already have mq9 as and now we are looking to purchase mq9 b so in aero india fest which happened in bengaluru it was announced that the turbo propeller engines which power the mq9 b will be supported by hals engines division for the indian market like we already saw here we said that there will be indigenous more indigenous content right so that will be enabled by hal especially in the engine section so that is it about this article now we will see one interesting article about the titan tragedy the tourist submersible which imploded what happened what is the real scenario that we will see in this article so why is this article in news it is because of the most talked about news that is the implosion of the titan submersible it is a submersible the name of which is titan so what is this titan submersible it is an underwater vehicle and it is operated by a us company called ocean gate and this company organizes underwater expeditions for both research as well as tourism and this titan submersible was built with off the shelf components what is off the shelf component say for example you are making food you don't have anything in your fridge whatever is left you might have some amount of bread left some amount of butter left some amount of egg left if you are doing something with the help of whatever is left with you without purchasing anything new that is just off the shelf similarly this titan submersible was built with off the shelf components whatever material were was right away available using that this titan submersible submersible was built and this was for cost effectiveness and innovation so this was the motive behind it why this particular submersible was off the shelf okay and with respect to these submersibles there are guidelines by noaa that is the national oceanic and atmospheric administration so this is a us body they also have guidelines for research exploration and salvage of rms titanic so this titan submersible it was to go to the wreckage of titanic for tourism purpose in this particular case so they know are they have guidelines for research exploration and salvage of rms titanic and there are also unesco guidelines for preservation of underwater world heritage sites so this these guidelines of unesco they talk about long term preservation of underwater cultural heritage and there should be responsible access to these areas and it should be a non intrusive access you should not disturb the wreckage and the no guidelines are also similar in line to the guidelines of unesco so taking souvenirs from the wreckage is strongly discouraged according to the noaa guidelines so basically be it unesco guidelines or noaa guidelines it is mainly focused on non disturbance being as less intrusive as possible okay 
So, what is the difference between a submarine and a submersible? A submarine is independent. Okay, it has its own power reserves. It will depart from a port and it can come back to the port after an exploration. But a submersible, it is smaller in size than a submarine and it has less power. So, it has to work with a ship in tandem. So, this ship only will launch this. So, the ship will go. It will launch the submersible underwater and it will re retrieve. The ship will only retrieve the submersible. Okay. So, this Titan submersible, it was also working with a vessel that is a small ship called as Polar Prince. So, this Titan uh, submersible, it was made up of carbon fiber and titanium. Okay, and it was capable of going up to 4000 meters under the sea. It was able to go 4000 meter under the sea. And in this particular submersible, there is space for 5 crew members to sit on the floor. But they cannot stand. And this particular submersible, it will be operated from the ship. Right? So, we already saw that. And the controller for operating this particular submersible is like a game controller. Sony PlayStation style controller was used to control this Titan submersible from the ship. Okay. Why this was done? Because uh, gaming consoles, they are very easy to use and they are more sensitive to our movements. So, that is why this particular method was used to control the submersible. So, this Titan, now it has imploded. Unfortunately, whoever was aboard, they have died. But uh, did this vessel have any problem before? Right? So, there is a viewport. There is a viewport. Say, for example, let us assume that this is the submersible. There is a viewport. Viewport means a small window like thing that is there. So, it was built only to withstand pressure that is felt at 1300 meters. But Ocean Gate, the company which is building this Titan submersible, they took the submersible to the depth of 4000 meter. This particular viewport could not withstand that much of pressure. And there was also a whistle blower, whistle blower in this company, Ocean Gate, who said that this design is experimental. So, it is very dangerous to use such kind of design in a high risk mission. Another thing is there is a lack of comprehensive hull testing. Hull is the body of a vessel, body of a ship. There was lack of comprehensive testing. There was usage of hazardous flammable materials inside the submersible. All these were brought out by the whistleblower of Ocean Gate as early as 2018. But Ocean Gate resold this whistleblower, and that case is still happening. So, what happened in this particular case was faulty design. Faulty design. As we already said, this viewport could not withstand pressure more than the pressure that is felt at 1300 meter depth. Right? Another thing is uh, inflammable materials. Inflammable material. Another thing is uh, off the shelf components. Lack of testing. All these are the po possible reasons due to which this submersible imploded upon itself. Imploded, that means explosion is, explosion happens. That means the particles will explode. It will come outwards. Implosion is collapsing on itself because of the high pressure. Okay. So, that's it for this article. Next article is about the Chandrayaan 3 mission. So, Vikram Pragyan to return for another tries with the moon. 
so vikram is the lander vikram is the lander pragyan is the rover rover usually moves on the surface of a new planet or a satellite that is moon in this case and lander is stationary okay so uh, these two were in the chandrayaan 2 mission but what happened was uh, during the chandrayaan 2 mission this pragyan rover it failed the vikram lander when it was trying to make a soft landing on the surface of the moon this pragyan rover failed and now these two landers and rovers will be a part of chandrayaan 3 mission as well isro is retaining the same name and chandrayaan 3 mission will happen in mid july so that is what is given here the indian space research organization plans to retain the names of the chandrayaan 2 lander and rover for their chandrayaan 3 equivalents as well so the lander will bear the name vikram after vikram sarabhai the father of indian space program and the rover is pragyan so what happened was uh, in chandrayaan 2 isro had lost this lander rover configuration because as this vikram this vikram lander it crashed on the lunar surface while it was trying to land now this chandrayaan 3 it will be launched with the help of gslv mk3 okay now this gslv mk3 is renamed as lvm3 okay so this particular pragyan which is the rover it will carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface so this lander more about this lander and the rover so the vikram lander vikram lander it has four payloads the first payload is radio anatomy of moon bound hypersensitive ionosphere and atmosphere rambha that is the first payload second payload is chandra surface thermophysical experiment chest and third component is instrument for lunar seismic activity ilsa and finally laser retro reflector array lra so these are all the four components ramba chase ilsa lra are the components of the vikram lander okay so the pragyan rover pragyan rover it has two components okay that is alpha particle x ray spectrometer apxs and laser induced breakdown spectroscope that is libs these are all the two components of the pragyan rover okay in addition to these there will be one more payload on the propulsion module which is called as shape spectro polarimetry of habitable planet earth so when the mission launches we will have more about these sub components of the vikram lander and the pragyan rover in the news okay as of now you know that there are four components in the vikram lander and two components in the pragyan rover okay so that's it for this article we'll discuss some pyqs with reference to the election of president of india consider the following statements the value of vote of each mla varies from state to state this is correct so what is the value of vote of one mla 
it is population of a state divided by number of mlas into 1 by 1000 so depending on the population of the state and depending on the number of mlas the vote value of each mla will vary the value of the vote of mps of lok sabha is more than the vote of mps of the rajya sabha it is mentioning plural mps see the value of one vote of a mp of lok sabha is equal to value of one vote of a mp of rajya sabha but we know that there are more number of mps in lok sabha so collectively the lok sabha mps have more value than the collectivity of rajya sabha mps it is asking plural so second statement is also correct answer is c both one and two next question Consider the following countries. Which of the above among are among the free trade partners of Asia? So, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, right? So, who is the FTA partner of Asia? Okay. So, India is a FTA partner of Asia. Okay. But USA is not an FTA partner of Asia. Okay. So, we can eliminate this option. now we are left with a and c okay so canada is also not a partner okay the answer is c so both us and canada they are not a partner of asia the other countries have fta with asia for this purpose only earlier during the obama government they wanted to bring in a comprehensive fta but uh, it was called as trans pacific partnership tpp trans pacific partnership but it did not come to fruition later because trump became the president So as of now Canada and USA they don't have any FTA with Asia so the other members are all having FTA with Asia that is Australia China India Japan they all have FTA with Asia next question town sometime mentioned in news and the country Aleppo is Syria that is correct Kirkuk is not Yemen Kirkuk is in Iraq. Similarly, Mosul. It is not in Palestine. Mosul is also in Iraq. Mazari Sharif. It is in Afghanistan. Yes. So, which of the pairs are correctly matched? One and four. So, answer is B. Okay. That's it for today's discussion. Follow us on all the social media platforms. This is Indumati signing off. Thank you and all the best.